going to ask everybody, everyone in the spirit in the stand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Minister will be coming in. He's going to keep saying.
I'm going to take my son from this podium by after we sing the hymn, the opening hymn, and then we're going to have a prayer. Is the bad list for what was here? Not here. Okay. So um, we worship him not because he's not here, so we, uh, Minister Waters will do that. So I'm we sing that song on the prior. The next voice you'll be here is Minister Green. Praise the name of the Lord. We'll take a portion of the service from part. Okay? So may God bless you as you join me in standing, everyone. As we do the opening him. What a friend we have in Jesus.
Great God of peace on earth, in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus. We honor you today, we praise you, we bless your name. We give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. You have placed us in our right mind. No, God, we give you thanks, Lord. As we come today to celebrate the life of our dear beloved sister, God, whom you have chosen to take the cross for. We thank you, Lord, for the life, Lord, that she has lived. We thank you, dear Lord, for what she has meant to us, my God. No, God, even now you have chosen to take her home, Lord. We bless your name and we thank you, dear Lord. As we enter today, O oh God, in this Thanksgiving service, we pray, O oh God, that whatever be said and done, my God, it's to your glory and to your honor. We pray your blessings upon your children today. Oh God, as we look to you, remember that our family members, Lord, who are grieving at this time. We pray you strengthen them, my God. We pray, oh God, that we be with them and they will take comfort in your words. Mighty God. Bless us one and all, we pray, as we turn over the rest of this service in your hand. In Jesus' holy precious name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You may receive it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This Mother Hamlet has served the Lord all her life. All 50 years she has been doing so. So I want you to live that legacy. Come into church, praise God, and um, being involved in everything that the church was involved with. And so I want you to live that legacy in worshiping God today. Hallelujah. And I want to say this. I, brother, was shows in the hospital. And because of the virus, put it on, I want you to visit her so badly. And I, one of her sisters told me that she was asking for me. So I said, I must go. And I purpose in my heart to go there. But I only realized that I couldn't get through. <laughs> but you know, when you have people contacts, I talked to one of her daughters and they said, Boy, I can't want somebody in the place, you don't know nobody inside here. So I called someone, one of my colleagues, Pastor, who's working there, and he did the honors and get me through. And it's as if Sister Hangen just wanted to hear my voice. She did not look up at me. Hallelujah. But when I hold her hand, you could feel her. And I shared with her, hallelujah. Say, I'm here. I call my name, repeat my name to her, and say, I'm here. Share a word with her. Sing a song with her. Praise God. Hallelujah. She holds my hand as we sing together. Hallelujah. And when I got the call a few hours later, and she had passed on, Somebody texts to my, my phone that probably she was just waiting until you come. So I want to tell you that, and I, I was reading in my preparation of sharing today that the Lord is always close to his children. And I mean the children that are blood washed, that are saved at the entrance of death. The presence of the Lord is there. And so we want to honor this wonderful lady, legacy. Praise God as we look back at what she had invested within this community. So at this moment, I'm going to ask Minister Green to come and even do a portion of the program. Praise God. Put your hands together for Minister Hugh Green as it comes to here. Let's pray to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are here to celebrate in our remembrance of Sister 
angling or the angling, the sakara, and so forth as we have known her. Um, we will continue our program. Um, the first lesson will be taken from 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to verse 58 and that will be done by Aiden Anglin Branson. You see here? Behold, I assure you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The strength of sin, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Very bright young man there. Very, very fluently. At this time, my friend, Nicole Betty. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. Amen, amen. I have heard of a lamb and a faraway friend.
ask the question, man, who cooked this, this sweet? And that was um, Sister Clara who have done that. She was a very good cook, very kind lady, very humble person as we have all known her in the church. We're going to have um, some tributes and they're going to go in this order. Um, the church choir, then the Davis siblings, then the Henry siblings, and the church. I'm going to ask you to come in this order. The church choir, Davis siblings, Henry siblings, and the church.
says, don't cry for me. Don't cry for me. I will be okay. Heaven is my new home now, and this is where I stay. Don't cry for me. I'm where I belong. I want you to be happy and try to stay strong. Hello? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm just going to read this poem. It says, Don't cry for me. Don't cry for me. I will be okay. Heaven is my new home now, and this is where I'll stay. Don't cry for me. I am where I belong. I want you to be happy and try to stay strong. Don't cry for me. I, it was just my time, but I will see you someday on the other side. Don't cry for me. I am with, I am not alone. The angels are here with me to welcome me home. Don't cry for me, for I have no fear. All my pain is gone, and Jesus took my tears. Don't cry for me. This is not the end. I'll be waiting here for you when we meet again. I'm John, one of the sisters. I'm not going to say a poem or anything. I'm just going to say, my sister Beatrice, my family chain is broken. And I just want to say, Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you. You have blessed us with so much love that I can't explain. I love you. Good morning to everyone. Tribute. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought you had come. the deceased and a part of the Henry's family. Now if you notice, you will see Henry's family, Davis family, Anglin family. Please don't get confused, we're all the same one family. Um, I was very heartbroken when I heard my sister pass away. You know, tomorrow is not promised to us, but usually we are not looking for this to happen like that, but it always does. And it's not easy for us to handle such situation, but with God's help, we try to get through this. This is a time when we all must go and unfortunately, this is my sister time to go. She did not go, but she left behind two things. Her legacies. One, which is her children, her grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and the rest of the families. And the second thing she left behind was her memories. And her memories is for all of us so that when we remember the good things about her, we can look back and smile about it, and it will wipe the sadness away from our hearts. We have lots of memories where Beatrice is concerned. 
I remember growing up as a child, we did not need anyone at our house to make us happy or for us to have fun. We had fun our own. We sing, we talk, we laugh, we dance. And you would think our yard is filled with the whole community when all it is, is just us. Beatrice loved to cook. There's many things Beatrice loved to do. But one memory is that always stick with me. And my sister Michelle and I, we talked about this one memory all the time. And we just sit and laugh about it. And this memory was when my sister was dating her husband-to-be, Mas Cleveland. And we were at home one day, and we saw this man walking into our yard. And as nosy children, we always want to know where is this man coming from, where do you think he's going? Anyway, he came and he asked for my father. And my father came out and he said to us, he wants us to stay outside. This is big people argument. <laughs> and he went into the house and he closed the door behind us. Now he knows that we're going to be listening in anyway. <laughs> and when he locked the door, all of us ran to the door and we paced our ears to the keyhole to hear what's going on. And that was when we realized Miss Cleveland was asking Beatrice for her hand in marriage. Asking Papa for her hand in marriage. Now, that was a wonderful marriage because it bring forth some wonderful children and great grandchildren. And all the love that there is to give, it was there. As Cleveland was a wonderful man and the best husband for Beatrice. And we thank God for that. Um, now Beatrice is gone and I'm asking her kids to live the life. Live the good life, make her proud. Because that's what she would have wanted for you guys. Keep God in your life because that was very important to her. She did not go without her church. That was number one for her. I am going to miss my sister very much. And I know for sure I'm going to see her again. I just hope it's not too soon. <laughs> but as you know, it's not up to me. It's up to God. He decides when it's time for us to say goodbye. Okay? Now, my real tribute is just a two-verse song for my sister. And it goes like this. Lately, Lord, I almost feel like dying. Wake up like a child, alone at night. Sometimes, Lord, I just can't keep from crying. And Lord, I just don't have the strength to carry on. Jesus. Jesus, it's me 
She's scary and she's gentle. She had a heart of love and compassion towards the young and the old. I'm gonna miss her smile. I'm gonna miss her laugh, her funny jokes. But most of all, I'm gonna miss her food. <laughs> She's such a great cook, you know. Oftentimes when I came down to visit, the first thing she would ask me, what am I gonna give you to eat now, my sister? And I would turn to her and say, do you have any of my special? And she would laugh and said, oh yes, I had a little piece there in the bucket just for you. <laughs> I'm going to miss that, you know, very much. Because she's not here anymore to ask me such questions. She's gone. But I just want to thank God for my other sister, Ted, who is living here, along with my two brothers, happy and good and my nieces and nephews. As you all know, my other sisters, they are living overseas. But it won't be the same without Clark. It will never be the same. So for me to stand there today to say to Clark, it's the hardest thing I ever have to do. Father, sweet, beautiful, amazing memory will be in my heart forever. I know you're up there, sis, with your Lord, having a grand time in heaven. But I miss you. <laughs> I miss you so much. <laughs> but you're the better place now. And may your beautiful soul rest in peace. Goodbye, my sister Clara. Goodbye, I love you. I always will. everyone. Tribute to Beatrice. A special smile. A special place. Face. In her heart. A special place. Memories or gifts to treasure. Hours of you will last forever. Loving memories never die. As airs roll on, 
and days pass by, in our hearts a memory is kept of one we love and will never, never forget. Clara, you are already greatly missed. Rest in peace. My name is Michelle Baldwin and I'm also a sister. So many great things were said about Clara and that was Clara. But not only did she have the family, but she had the whole world. Everyone was Clara's children, sister, brothers. Clara was awesome and like Rose said, she was the best cook. And today, I just want to say I love my sister and most important, I miss my sister but I know she was with the Lord because she knows the Lord. And when you die knowing the Lord, we just have to live our life that one day we will be there to see Clara in glory land. And I just want to say two verses of song. I dreamt that the great judgment morning at dawn and the trumpet had blown.
tribute for the late Beatrice Anglin from the Assembly of affectionately called Mother Anglin and Auntie Clara. To God be the glory, great things he has done. We thank God for lending to us one of the most precious gifts in the person of Mother Anglin. I say it because she continues to have a positive impact on everyone that crossed her path while she was with us. Mother Anglin was outstanding in every area. She was not a university graduate, but her life touches everyone that she needs. Indeed, she was a role model. She was very respectful and humble and continued to show these attributes until she took her last breath. Today, I am proud to say she was a woman of God who would never hesitate to show love to everyone. I came to this church in 1979 and Mother Angley was here long before I came. She was ordained as a mother in 2003. And indeed, I can say, she was a mother. She worked relentlessly in every area of the church and with everyone, whether small or great. She has been a member of this church for over 50 years. Mother Anglin was one of the best cook. When it comes to convention, no one would stop her from playing her part in the kitchen. No one can cook rice and peas like Mother Anglin. She would be there from early in the morning to help prepare breakfast and dinner. I remember when Pastor Collins, late Pastor Collins, was with us when we would have crusade the preachers that came over they would be placed in her hands for her to take care of them she would take such good care of them they all loved her and always talked highly about mother Anglin. she was very committed when I asked her how do you do all of this she said I remember I was sick and I prayed to God and I told God if you heal me I'm going to work for you for the rest of my life and that's exactly what she did. This is just a little humor. I remember before we moved over in the new building for school we used to have school in the classroom at the back in the dining area. And one morning, the late Pastor Collins came and was standing at the door. Mother Anglin came and saw him, and she turned right back. Pastor looked at me and said, why did she turn back? I said, I don't know, sir. And she walked through another door and went into the kitchen. Pastor went into the kitchen, and she laughed. Pastor said, why did you turn back? She said, sir, your mouth is too long, and we couldn't pass you. <laughs> Pastor laughed until he cried, and everyone laughed. She was full of fun and laughter. She wore many hats. I remember days gone when Mother Anglin, Sister Hunter, and myself would visit the sick and shut in after school. She would have something to give to everyone. She gave her service without holding back. No service never missed her. Sunday morning, fasting, prayer meeting, visiting, she was always there. Indeed, she was a woman of God. We could go on and on and talk about this wonderful woman. She was a community person. Her labor on earth has come to an end. 
She is now resting, waiting to meet her maker. Sleep on, Mother Angry. We shall see you on the other side when the mist of gold away. She will be great mist, but will always be in our hearts. To her family, be strong. She is gone to a better place. Her soul is resting in peace. Thank you.
and we share together, pray together. And so she was a wonderful person. And when I think of sharing a word, the word that comes, two words that comes in my spirit was, I want to die the death of the righteous. That was Balaam said that in Numbers. Then another scripture came, which I'm going to share with you here in Psalm 116, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord, the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord, or the death of his saints. The word in this context from the Hebrew means here expensive, rare, costly. So the song means put paint of paper on the precious are the same. Would die in the Lord. If you always say precious in the sight of God, God is always watching over the saints, and I want to put it in saints. For there's two things when I research this about. The righteous, the ungodly are in the text. It says the wicked. So you can make your choice. And so God, God, protect his people. In our sight, we are covered, we are shielded. And I know sickness, pain and pain comes. He's always there. He said, Our death is a curse and an enemy to us. It is still precious because it removes. The remaining barriers. It removes the pain. The righteous sleeps. The righteous is resting. The righteous goes into enter into peace with God. The righteous is in the presence of God when they die. But the word of God says in Proverbs 14 and verse 32, when calamity comes, the wicked are brought down. But evil in death, the righteous have refuge. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, there are two roads and two ways with God. It is heaven or hell. Someone sent something to my WhatsApp page this morning. It's out of Trinidad. We have this and I heard it's in the United States now where they're having this club, children club, where it's a Satan club in the schools. So you have to be careful. It's right in Trinidad, so it's with Jamaica. Where the club is that they are having this club at the school, and they say that. Satan is a nice guy. 
nice guy. It also says heaven or hell robber is not real. My God. And all of that Satan is, they don't mention Satan. All of that, this is when his teacher to learn more about science. Science. And you notice in the COVID-19, they are talking about science. So the science versus the church. Science versus Christianity. Yes. The COVID-19, the vaccine and all. Science. But God is bigger than science. Amen. So this man has to look at it seriously. I said to the um, they gave four months up, so you can see dear minister. I said it here this morning. Because someone said it to me. In the school, they are starting with the children there. I say that is a nice guy. It goes on to say, even the Satan does not even exist. So they talk about Satan. I want you to listen to it. And I have a song with it. Nice song. So he didn't catch with the children then. But I want to say to this congregation, hell is real. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Precious, expensive, costly is the child of God who died in the Lord. The child of God who served. Fifty years, Sister Mungri, before the church was so big, even before it was so on this side. Those of you are coming here a long time. The church was just right up there. Edge going right down there. That's the church. And that was not the first church. Touch me. Sister Mungri coming to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And serve the Lord. So precious, expensive, it's costly. You you wear a ring or you have a watch or something. I need you. It's expensive. Those who serve the Lord, those who give themselves to God, in a you are expensive. You are rare. God always sees in your head. Is a value of what a child of God. Blessed are the dead. The writers of the Revelation said, Who died in the Lord, for they rest from their labor in the world. Blessed, beloved. So these are contrasts. The psalmist in Psalm 1 says, The blessed is the man. Now standing in the way of Caesar, now sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law, do he meditate in your life. He shall be like a tree that planted by the rivers of water, that bring forth fruit in the season. And in weeds and the water, watch them do it shall prosper. But look at this other verse. Not so the wicked. They are like a trough with the wind blew it away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand in the judgment. Of the righteous. My brothers and sisters, you see what's happening in Jamaica? The violence, the killing, the violence in the schoolroom. Many of you here don't want to try to beat him. The life is strong. But it's strong of the world. You tell her. This morning I have to be in the gun zone. And you 
talk too much, we talk too much. <laughs> so we want him. So this morning we have to throw it on him. He said, why are you good? And he threw it off, you know. See, you know what? You have to throw it. Look here, do it. We will be close for a murder tonight. Beat him, never kill us. I want him to be dead. And it's good for me. It's true. Never give me a talk. But don't jump We are not American. American culture is different. We are Caribbean people. We are Jamaican. And if you do West Indian history, they say the worst slaves were sent to Jamaica. Those of you who do West well, history, hmm? worse. Show me up Jamaicans are a different kind. Do you know see why the world of Jamaicans? We're so small, but all of them, everybody wants to come to Jamaica, you know? Everybody wants a taste of Jamaica, you know, Jamaican man. Hello, ladies. Oh, Lord. I'm saying, beloved, our world, our society, the, the schools, and I have to talk about that, the schools, Fight. Lord have mercy. Me could have think of God should live on teacher. <laughs> Brother Chesley. Should live on teacher. In a my days. No one. Brother, it will be double. When I get home, I tell you. But these children. And some of you don't have any feeling for the teachers. I can come down the below. Because we, we talk all kind of thing. Now let me tell you something. It's which last year, year before last, the teacher them strike, woman strike. Alright. I'm a chairman for one of the schools. So them call, they say chairman and board member have come to school that Monday to have class. So when I went, they put me in grade one. <laughs> grade one. And grade three, I tell you. The next day I don't go back, you know. <laughs> the amount that trouble this grade one gave me. As you are correcting one over there, more and more over there, chewing things all over the place. Said, Lord, Lord. Bless you, teacher. Teachers, you're inside here. God bless you. God bless you. Huh? So the children of today, they are question that is in our country. I touch another one. I won't be long with you. Is how life has no value. I heard the commission of police says that the boy don't know to fifteen thousand dollar. Minister Green, if you want to lick a man, you know, just get one of them and pay them fifteen. All this stuff. But they say so gun is so prevalent that the young boys have gone. So just they just come and they tell them no, you are your sister, your brother, your neighbor having a problem. Them come and say, boy, you want me? You want me get rid for you? Just give me fifteen thousand dollars. When you hear the news, that's all life. There's no value on life. No value on life. And beloved, don't think it can't be in trails. Just a few months ago, it was in labyrinth. Gunman show up. Boop, boop. No value on life. But precious. Are the saints who serve the Lord, who die in God. You are real, you are expensive, you are costly. I challenge us today, beloved. If you are not a Christian, if you have not given your life to the Lord, do it now. Because you notice when the righteous die, and I say the righteous, then they're not crying and squealing 
Um, it, it, the report from the doctors, some of the doctors at the hospital says, my God, those who are Christians are saved. My God, when they are dying, the, 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 the countenance, the whole behavior is different. But those who are out of God, the hell they give in the hospital when they are dead. Because they don't serve the Lord. But the psalm is said, precious in the sight of God. Precious sister, brother, you might be struggling. You might be going to the heart now. Stay in faith with God. Stay in God. Love God. Serve God. With all the criticism. With all the hell that turn up. Serve God. For precious. Oh Lord of mercy. And the precious. When I hold on to sister Clara hand in the hospital bed. That warm hand. She said to, to the others, 
I see you later, brother. I see you later, sir, brother. I see you later. Then she said to Harry, goodbye. Goodbye. She said to all of the rest, I see you later. But to one of them, goodbye. And he questioned that. But at the funeral in the church, he found the answer. That if I don't give my life to the Lord, because my other brothers and sisters are saved, if I don't give my life to the Lord, I won't see mommy again. I won't see mommy again. And he gave his heart to the Lord. And I'm challenging you here. All of us who are gathered here are not saved. We're not a Christian. Can you say, precious in the sight of the Lord, when you die, you're going to be precious. You're going to go into the presence of God. In the immediate presence of God. Are you going to be taken into the outer darkness? You're going to be taken to outer darkness. I've heard people dying. I've heard people dying. And he them said, Lord Jesus, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. Take me out, they're dying. And I heard people say, Lord, it's dark, it's dark, help me. But it's too late. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Literally. No story. It's hot. It's hot. Fire. It's too dark. Because they have rejected Jesus. Precious in the sight of the Lord. I would say, Martin, I forget my sermon, sister, for you now. When we come, we leave my Bible, everything I have, we forget it. So, I may have everything else, <laughs> but precious in the sight of the Lord. As I turn back the mic to the moderator, I want to challenge somebody in here. And I'm serious. None of us know who is next. I don't know. But the one thing I know, I am ready to go to be the Lord. I'm ready if he comes now, I'm ready to go to be with the Lord. I've settled the account. I've made my choice. You are here this afternoon and you're not saved. I want you to lift your hands. I'm not going to call you to this altar, but I want you to make. Don't be afraid of anybody. It is you and God. You saw me go before God and are you afraid you know? Are you saved? Are you a Christian? And at this funeral, you want to. It be clear upon your presence, precious in the sight of God. Expensive costly wear in the sight of God. Leave your hand up. You're not a Christian, you're not saved. Thank God for that hand. Don't be afraid. How publicly thank God for those hands. God, church. We don't know what next, you know. We can meet in an accident. I was coming right here to train and service one, one day. And when I came up the area, a, a, a week could get back right in a big yard. My wife was in it. Two of my children and my two grandchildren was in it. We think we did. What? God is God. I come in the church, I'm just coming. I don't need to in them, I went to in them and I'm coming up here. And I could have right off. Yes. But God spared my life. And so many times, we live in a time now, beloved, that I don't know. You don't have to go to road for a gunshot reach you. We heard the news in Kingston in Montego Bay, they're in a damn bed asleep and gunshot kill them, catch them in a damn bed. So you don't have to go on the road. My brothers and sisters, for death to come, but are you ready and appear to me, God? Father, I want to pray for all those hands that was raised, Lord. And if you those who are in this building, Lord, and the outside, God and I to speak to them. 
I ask you to save them. I ask you to deliver them. I ask you to set them free, Lord. Breathe upon them, Lord. As we commit them in your hands, in the name of the Lord, God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Deep God wants Come on, give him praise and glory in the house. Come on, lift your hands and give him praise. Come on, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's the King of Kings and he is the Lord of Lords. And as we come to celebrate the life of our sister Bates Anglin, Sister Clara, such a wonderful woman of God. Amen. We have a long journey together. When I was born, we know her, my brothers and my sisters, we'd have known her from way back in Roscommon. Amen. We used to visit her home, especially when she is cooking. Amen. Right there, I can tell you. That's why they call we call him dinner. We used to eat off his dinner because sometimes you know why he eats a boy. His food was ours. Amen. And so we come a long way. Glory to God. Wonderful woman of God. Always giving, always sharing. And whatever is said about her is true reality. I was saying Monday night, sometimes persons talk a lot about persons when they died, and most times they go so. They try to put on a whole heap of stuff. But I'm a certain thing what I've said today about our sister Beatrice Anglin is true reality. And we give thanks. And she's gone to a better place today. Amen. She has gone to a better place. She's gone to rest for a little while. Because one of these days, she will be a rose from the grave. Glory to God. And so we thank God for today. And so we're going to come to the program. It's offering time. Glory to God. Take your wallets out. Amen. Take your purse out. We're going to collect. Amen. An offering. Amen. Glory to God. And so we'll have a song. Glory to God. As the offering is being Take up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. What a friend we are in Jesus.
mà nó ăn em kia nào. Little but Talawa. 
She was strong in body with a very determined mind. She pushed herself and fought to achieve her ultimate goal. She may not have had the academics that she desired, but that did not deter Clara. As she grew and blossomed, she not only became a beautiful young lady, but most importantly, blossomed with the love of God in her heart. Though young, she was excited about the Lord and being in God's presence. I believe she had said in her heart, like the psalmist David, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. The path that Clara trod testified of it. As we say in Jamaica, every classic not she did it. Giving praise, singing and dancing in the house of her God. Growing up with Clara was a pleasant experience. Filled with lots of laughter, unity and love. We looked up to her with great respect. She exhibited nurturing, motherly qualities from a tender age. Well behaved, sober and responsible. She did well with all the duties that were performed in our household. Cooking, however, was definitely her specialty. Throughout her life, she tried many things, but always came back to her passion for cooking. And oh, was she good at it. Her fingers seem to have seasoning and spices in them. From the young to the old, everyone loved her cooking. When she gives you a plate of food, you lift your ten finger. And if not careful, other ten to go to at night. I believe her passion for cooking came from a desire to feed people. Clara was very kind. When someone visited Clara's house, she would give them her dinner and go cook some more, even if she had to run to her farm to dig or cut some things. Pot a the putan, food a the cook, mouth a the feed. Being hungry in her house is a no-no. In her outside kitchen, you could always find pan pork in a bucket. Smoked meat over pimento wood that smells just fine. Oh, how we'll miss her cornmeal and potato pudding and the good old coconut drops. She knew what it meant to turn our hands and make fashion. Clara opened her doors to strangers, family, and anyone who needed a place to lay their heads for a while. She didn't mind giving up her bed to sleep on the floor. That was Clara. She was an extraordinary woman, very encouraging and definitely a people person. Loved by adults and adored by children, oh what a character she was. She seemed to have a smile for everyone, a special arm not only to feed the hungry, but also to put money in a broke pocket, to comfort a broken heart. Wipe tears from someone's eyes and help to fill your daily share. Clara, you are so dear to many far and near. We who are gathered here today, we are sad to say goodbye. We'll never again hear your voice or see your smile on this side of life. The lives you have touched with love are stained, and we'll remember you as long as we remain. Sleep on, my sister. Take your rest. We love you lot, but God loves you best. Clara, C, charismatic and caring. L, loving and loyal. A, ambitious and attentive. R, reliable and resilient. A, amazing and articulate. Lady Clara, Rest in peace, our sister. May light perpetually shine on thee.
pay tribute to kind soul. I stand this afternoon to pay tribute to a kind soul and dungeon heart and a disciplined mind. One of the most precious persons on earth, Beatrice Anglin. Auntie Clara, as we call her, was truly extraordinary. She was always kind, honest, hardworking, caring, jovial. There was never a dull moment with Auntie Clara around you. Auntie Clara was renowned around the highlight. Even in places in different parts. She was known for the best rice and the peas and the stew pork. Among the children, she was a popular porridge and a soup lady. Most children's parents, upon arrival, into pocket. Whenever she remembers something that someone likes and prepares it just to surprise them. For example, I am a lover of pork and fish. And sometimes she would spontaneously purchase and prepare the meal and take it to me. Whenever I tried to pay what was spent, Auntie Clara would turn up her eyes and say, Woman, move from side of me, y'all. You ask me if I buy anything? That's the giving spirit she had. She would go above and beyond to ensure that everyone around her was fed, happy, and contented. Auntie Clara was loving and tender towards children. She was not just a great cook, but an extra, sorry, an exceptional nurse. Small children tend to have frequent accidents or get sick suddenly and Auntie Clara would step, stop whatever she was doing to rinse out a uniform, wash a child, or treat an open wound. Whenever an adult gets sick, Auntie Clara have a bush remedy for every ailment. Auntie Clara was one who would give her last to make anyone feel comfortable, worthy, appreciated, and loved. Auntie Clara, you have left footprints, a legacy to uphold, and great shoes to fill. We love and miss you wholeheartedly. And we hope to see you someday. Sleep on Auntie Clara and take your rest. We all love you, but Jesus loves you best. Come on, give up a room for us one more time. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. We are continuing, we are continuing. Glory to God. And so, coming up now, amen. Sister Mary will come, our church member will come and give, amen, a tribute as well, amen. She'll be doing it for Sylvia Heights. And those who will be doing the opening tribute, amen, light up yourself. You have three minutes when you come, glory to God, because time is going, and now we are happy to have here, amen. Oh, all right, cool to come back right away. All right, thank you. All right, go ahead. Okay, we're just going to ask you to be a little patient with us because Aunt Clara has many children here. A whole lot of picnic. Yeah, and if everybody should come up this evening, we would have space to hold them. And so what we're going to do, I'm going to read a tribute. And then I'm going to ask some of the children, the smaller ones, they're going to come along with some of the uh, past students. Um, we, we didn't have enough roads for everybody, but father and child is going to walk, or mother and child is going to walk. And so we're going to ask you to just be patient with us, and we're going to do it after the 
the tribute and the song. All right, let me begin. Tribute for the late Beatrice Anglin, affectionately called by everyone, Auntie Clara. As the song stated, tears are our language, but God understands. We thank God for giving us the privilege of knowing one of the nicest human beings he has ever created in the person of Mrs. Beatrice Anglin. As a role model, she exhibits these qualities. God-fearing, a mentor, trustworthy, peacemaker, charitable, just to name a few. Her motherly conduct could be easily seen as she extended to everyone, especially to her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, other family members, and all who she meet daily. To us, the assemblies of the first born basic school, she was all of the above and much more. She was a faithful and committed worker, a servant of God. Her life positively impacted all persons with whom she interacted with. The Assembly of the First Born Basic School started in 1992 with Mrs. Hunter and myself. During this time, the children would take their lunch to school. I remember one day Auntie Clara approached me in 1994 and said, Sister Annette, I am at home and not working. I would like to come and cook for the children. Don't worry about how you're going to pay me. I just want to help. She said, you know, I was very sick. And I told the Lord, if he heals me, I will work for him. So I accepted her offer. She has been with us from 1994 until March 2020 when we had the pandemic. And all of us had to stay home. And the Clara never complained or grumbled. She gave thanks for the little she received. She was such a caring person. She cared for every child that comes through this institution and all the staff she had to meet. Hundreds of children passed through Annie Clara's hand. And today we have some will be marching up adults and there are many who are not here. We were like a family Parents would come from time to time to say, my child don't eat food, they don't drink porridge, they don't drink soup. <coughs> and Clara would just laugh and say, don't worry, we are going to take good care of your child. And before long, the parents would come back and say, all me can say, me no know how to do this up. But me and tell you, the people then come home and they say, Auntie Clara food nice, you see? And that's all we can hear in our ears. And we drink up the porridge and we'll ask for more. They will say, keep up the good work, Auntie Clara. You are doing well because my child can talk about you. As for me, she would cook for me, especially at Christmas time. Even in her sickness, she would tell her daughter, Juliet, at Christmas time, cook food and make Sister Annette get it. Food to eat, so me a beg you cook food and hear. She was so concerned about the school not having a cook. 
even the Thursday before she went into the hospital in April, I visited her. And she asked, you get any cook yet? I said, no, Auntie Clara. I said, don't worry. Sister Thelma is doing it. She said with a sigh of relief, thank God. Auntie Clara, like the virtuous woman in the Bible, her price is far above rubies. She was not afraid. She rises early. She stretched out her hands to the poor. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Many daughters have done well, but Auntie Clara excels them all. She was a gift sent from God indeed. She cared for hundreds of children. She made sure everyone was fed and taken care of. She would take special care in things at school to be done. And I would say to her, Auntie Clara, oh, when you get the lesson thing you have to from school? Because she would surprise us. And she would just laugh and say, food for eat, me cook it up on my yard, and I want everybody to enjoy it. And we were so happy. She loves to cook pork, and we enjoyed it. Her love was no boundary. She would go to length and breadth, and she would ask for help. I remember the first time we had Island Grill, people coming up and feeding us, it was through Auntie Clara talking with her daughter, Juliet. And what a time we had that day. She would go to length and breast to ask for help for the school, going to different persons, and Aunt Clara would always be there. Sports day, don't talk about that. Aunt Clara was head of things. Graduation, you could look forward to see Aunt Clara working and helping to feed people. And I could go on and on to talk about this great woman. She will always be remembered. And Clara has lived a full life. She is now gone home to be with her maker. Sleep on, Aunt Clara. You have done well. You will be greatly missed. But we shall see you in the sweet by and by when the mist has grown away. We encourage the children and other family members. Auntie Clara is resting in peace. Light is shining perpetually upon her. Thank you very much. At this time, Mrs. Santa is going to come. Then we're going to sing a song, and the children, adults and smaller ones, they're going to march up, they're going to place the rules.
three minutes. And so right now we're going to have Sister Mary come in, glory to God, to give a tribute and we have uh, Sister Sylvia Hines. She accompanied, glory to God. Do you know for them as they come? Amen. <laughs> Good afternoon everyone. Um, my tribute will just be a short one with the interest of time. I've known Sister Clara for over for approximately 17 years when I was introduced to her by her son Roydell. We shared a very close relationship. She was kind, loving, and true, and I'm surely gonna miss her. Okay, this tribute I'm reading on behalf of Sister Sylvia Hines. My dear Sister Angley, in tears I pen memories. I can't believe you're gone. I wasn't ready to say goodbye. I still haven't found the strength to show my face here today to say goodbye to you. My heart is full and my limbs are weak. If I had a say in life and death, you would be here with me today. So this is my goodbye letter to you. I'm thinking of you, Clara girl. I'm torn in my heart. In my silence, I'm thinking of you. I say your name almost every day. Now all I have are memories and a picture of you. I remember the days when we were young and strong, having our children. You were pregnant expecting Fiona, and I had no clue. You carried and kept your pregnancy so well, I couldn't but tell you did this, I couldn't tell, but you did the strangest thing. Just a minute. You carried your pregnancy so well that I couldn't tell, but you did the strangest thing. On the day you were giving birth, you sent a bundle of colorless to the house with a message saying that I will not see you anytime soon, but little did you know I was expecting my little one, Kimberly. We were blessed to have them a day apart. Boy, oh boy, Clara, we were planning NSYNC. The memories are numberless and forever. It went on into how we shared with each other and nothing was hidden. You were a, the planner, always seeking out the opportunities and never left me out. I remember when you called me and said, Sylvie, just buy two pigs. We can make some money. I, I never hesitated. You got the pigs, you pick mine, and you yours. I raised them, you raised them in your pig pen in your yard and I would send the feed and whatever was needed for the pig. When the pig grew up, mine ended being the bigger one and you being you got the buyer and without second thought, you gave me the profit without thinking twice. Some persons would do it the other way around and this made me love you in a different and special way because you were honest and a blessed friend. We were so close and always together. Pastor Collins had to separate, separate us one Sunday, in one Sunday service. He asked us, what do you always wanted to talk so much about? After that Sunday, we went on opposite side in church, but I would come back and every Sunday would give you the icy mints and the sweets in your hand and head over to the opposite side until Sunday service ended. My dear sister Clara, we end up traveling. My, my dear sister Clara, we end up traveling, flying together with our grandsons, Sean and Aiden, to Atlanta, where we spent the summer holidays together. The memories will live with me forever. We laughed, we cried, we prayed, and worried. 
if I should tell all the experiences and stories that we lived, it would take a day and a year. My sister, I'm missing you. But goodbyes are not forever. Goodbyes are not again. They simply mean I miss you until we meet again. Little did I know that day would God that day God would call your name. I love you dearly in death, and I'm doing the same. It broke my heart to lose you. Parts of me went with you, Caraga, the day God called your name. You left peaceful, happy memories. That, that's how I wanted to hold on to you. Although I cannot see you now, you're always in my heart. Our family chain is broken, and nothing seems the same. But as we are called one by one, the chain link. The chain will link again. Sleep on Caraval, my sister, my friend. Love, Sylvia Hines. Thank you.
That's it, anybody else? We have two more if possible. All right, that's it, Lord. Our brother is coming, glory to God. Amen. Give us a prayer as he comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. Growing up as a young man, gentles, uh, Clara was also an inspiration to me and my family also. I don't know how she got all that time to cook for everyone because she was cooking for us also. But um, I refuse to say uh, goodbye, but I'll just say see you later, Clara. Um, she was a great woman, and may your soul rest in peace. God bless y'all. Thank you. Goodbye.
God. Wonderful songs. Amen. By Brother Moreland. Amen. We are coming down. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, I heard a lot about the cooking and a lot of stuff. But Sister Clara was also a financial controller. Because a lot of persons here thought she was a bunker. Amen. A lot of persons save their money through Sister Clara. And they can attest to that. Because some people were not wasted their money. But Sister Clara was there as a banker. To see if that money you would have put aside. Amen. As we come down now, we're going to have the eulogy. Amen. By her daughter. Glory to God. By Amen. Fiona. Amen. Davis. Take it away. Good afternoon, everybody. The first time I must say I kind of struggled to. To, um, to put this eulogy together and that was because in between the tears it was difficult to find something that nobody knew about my mom and that was because she lived her life uh, the way she wanted to and what you saw was what it was so you're going to hear a lot of repetition today but thank God for repetition because that means that it's true. Beatrice Fabian Anglin, also known as Auntie Clara, was born on July 30th, 1946, to parents Lillian Latibodier and Alpheus Davis in Long Road, St. Mary. She attended the Long Road Catholic School and later migrated to Three Hills with her mother to, to, um, where she attended the Three Hills All Age School. But this was only for a short time as she dropped out of school to take care of some of her siblings. Beatrice was working with the Jensen's family as a caretaker and housekeeper when she met Cleveland. To cut the story short, they fell in love, got married, moved to Roscoe and St. Mary and had five children. Her first son passed away shortly after birth. She then had Sharon, Roydell, Juliet and Al. Beatrice and Cleveland bought a piece of land where they settled down to raise their children. April of 1980, horror took place when Sharon passed away from a heart disease, leaving her and the family with three children. Later, they adopted Yvette and her son, Asha. The family grew again when they had two daughters, Fiona and Shannabel, and sheltered, sheltered countless others of relatives and friends in between. Her husband Cleveland passed away May 2015, and although she was mourning, she organized everything and didn't skip a beat. As a young lady, Beatrice was extremely diligent. She worked odd jobs, pimento picking, washing clothes for other families, caretaking, housekeeping, you name it, she did it all. She was a fish vendor and an excellent cook. Her favorite things to eat were, and I can bet you can all guess it, fish, pork, and anything with salt. Mackerel, salt fish, salt pork, always paired with yam and banana. She was a devoted, loyal servant of God for over 50 years. And we should tell you because we have more stories as kids growing up. We were always here. Is he over here or were with our father who attended the Sabbath church in Rastaman? But we always had to find our place somewhere. They never thought about this, knowing that one was Seventh day and one was Sunday church. All they said was, you need to find yourself somewhere. She was a member of the Three Years Assembly of the First One Church of God. She told us that she made a call to God earlier in life when she was experiencing a pain in one of her legs. And she told God that if he healed her, she would live and work for him until the day she died. A couple of years before when we had her first stroke, we tried telling her that she needed to rest and it would be great if she retired. And her response was, was Leave God's business alone. That is between me and God. 
I'm saying that with a friend she used quite often when we would try to challenge her with things we thought was in her best in, um, interest. She worked for over 26 years as a cook at the Three Hills Assemblies of the First Born Basic School. The children at the school love her aunt Clara and her cooking. Some of them even enjoyed her cooking so much, they had it here but never at home. It was always a challenge. Some of the parents would come up to mommy and say, Clara, how are you putting out the food? The parents never want eat the food because they say, oh, if you add the Clara food. She was also one of the main cooks at the church's annual convention. Everyone loved her cooking, and in the words of a child, as Brother Walter said, the child said, this your rice and gongo peas need no means or gravy to eat with it. Another thing we would say to her was, Mummy, you should rest. Let somebody else cook for convention this year. And guess what her response was? Leave that business alone. <laughs> My mother did everything with genuine love for people she did, the people she did it for. And love for whatever she did. And that was what made her cooking so things are looking good. Mummy was an extraordinary woman. To us as her children, she was superwoman. And the absolute best mother a child could have. She went above and beyond for us always. To us and for us, there was nothing that she would not do. As a person of fact, the same goes for anyone she saw that was in need and needed her help. She treated people the same way she treated us. She would literally walk a mile to help someone if that was what would help them. She was kind, loving, caring, and explicitly honest. She, was, she always had a positive and youthful demeanor. When she came to visit us in Canada, we went to a Chinese restaurant. And at the Chinese restaurant, they had it posted in the window that people over 65 would eat for 50% off. So we said to the lady, well, my mom is over 65. And the lady said, what, no? Because as you know, if you know anyone from the Chinese diaspora, to get a discount from them, it takes everything. So when we had to dig into her purse and pull out her passport. And when she showed the lady, the little Chinese lady came and she bowed and she said, you look nothing like this age. And you know what? That was the same for us kids. It was hard for us to acknowledge her age because she was always so strong, full of energy and resilient. Her childhood was far from easy, but it made her the person she was. It was extremely difficult for her to leave us to go, to, for her to leave us to go anywhere. Actually, she almost never left us, except for when she traveled to her sisters in the U.S. or to her grandson, or when she came to visit me in Canada. Actually, the first time she traveled to the U.S., all of us kids packed up in a car and went to the airport. We cried like babies. We didn't want her to go. Shana then held down for dear life. The mummy neck we thought it would have broke. <laughs> but that was because we weren't used to her leaving us. People were always drawn to her because of her positive demeanor and her caring attributes. She had a motherly aura. These people considered themselves as her children, and she always treated them the same. She would give, she would give anything away her last if needed. She thought of others always before herself. She never had a selfish bone in her body. In May of 2020, Beatrice suffered and survived a stroke, which affected the left half of her body. And although she received several rounds of physiotherapy, she never walked again. And that was not lack of us pushing her. Come on, mommy, try and try. But that was because we were selfish. We wanted her to be back up on her feet so, you know, she could get around. And this was the first time we ever saw our mother sick in her lifetime. She never had a cold, a headache, nothing. Or if she did, we didn't see it and it didn't heal her back. When she became ill, this was the first time we realized this woman was human almost unrecognizable to us because 
We've never seen her this way. She's never slowed down, never been limited to one place. One thing though, after the stroke, she transitioned from being a cook to a food critic. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> she never skipped a beat at that night. Uh. <laughs> you would give her a porridge or soup and she said, hospital food that. Brown stew chicken, nah that black me. <laughs> I don't you dare boil out the salt out of salt food. You would hear. The stop gone out of this man, no flavor. <laughs> and don't you to dare tell her that the doctor said you should eat this or that. She said, doctor can say anything, I know if I eat it. <laughs> On April 13, when she suffered another stroke, she succumbed to her illness and passed away on Tuesday, April 26, 2022. God took her home to relieve her pain and discomfort. Her soul is now in a better place. She is survived by three sons, four daughters, 16 grandchildren, four great grandchildren, three brothers, eight sisters, nieces, nephews, other relatives, and friends. And this is a tribute that I wrote on behalf of my sibling to her. Mum, to the world you are mother, and to our family. You are, or you are our world. Today is the day we lay you to rest. To be your children, we were extremely blessed. In our hearts, our thoughts, a place you always hold, loving, thoughtful, kind-hearted, God-fearing, and bold. From today, let our actions reflect what we've learned. We can only hope we've made you proud. Daily, let our personalities remind others of you as you were always and forever genuinely true. A soldier for God, a teacher of life, all things that came so naturally to you. I hope someday we'll see you again, not on earth, but a place where love never ends. Our lives are and will always be filled with memories of you, treasures for a lifetime, as we will never ever forget you. Rest peace for the moment. We love you. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, give him praise in the house. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Yeah. Amen for those tribute, amen. And for the eulogy, give him praise and glory. Yeah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I was here last night, I was encouraging the virgin, but he was tearing up the gift. And so my, amen, encouragement for her children and grandchildren, stir up the gift that was in your mother, Sister Clara, or Beatrice Anglin. Continue the legacy that she had, glory to God, that she had brought forth in you. You may not see it now, but it's in you. Amen. As Paul encouraged Timothy to stir up the gift. Coming to us now as we bring the curtain down is Vivian Davis. She will come and give thanks. And after that, amen. Minister Green will come and pray the prayer. Amen. For the family.
lovely Beatrice, love to all the family. God bless, we will miss her, but we have her in her heart and her family members. Thank you all, everyone. Family at this time, please stand for me. The family of the disease, please stand.
Ik wil meneer naar zoek bij u zien. Hoe is dat? Oma. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Wood. Wood? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Come on. Come on. I guess it's really. Everybody hold up your flowers, let me see. Hold on. You saw it like a young boy. No, 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 no. Remember I told you a while ago? I just told him. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. 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 We're gonna sing from the back of our 
Someday I'm going away. I'm going to leave this world no more to roam. We're going to put our voices together and play it together. And let me see. No, no, no. Fix the one. Fix the one. Some sweet day. Some sweet day. I'm going away. I'm going to leave this world. No more to roam. Some sweet day. When life is over. Some sweet day. I'm going away. Oh, some sweet day. I'm going away, I'm gonna leave this world, no more to roam. Some sweet day, when life is over, some sweet day, I'm going away. Man that is born of a woman had but a short time to live and it's full of misery. He cometh out and is cut down like flour. He fleeted as it were a shadow and never continued in one way. In the midst of life we are in debt, of whom may we seek for secure. But of thee, O Lord, who for our sin are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord, God most holy, O Lord, mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, Deliver us into the bitter pain of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secret of our heart. Shut not the mercy years of our prayers. But spare us, Lord most holy, O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, Thou most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not that our last hour for any pain of death to fall from thee. We have some songs on the back of the ship we're going to sing. We're no voice to sing. Better days are coming by and die when we reach a city in the sky. As the workmen continue to do their work. No, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's let us blend our voice and we sing better days are coming by and by. By and by, when we reach the city in the sky, sorrows will be over and will come at last. And the days are By and by, better days are coming. By
just a win with that. Very quiet. Is that the point of the game? I think I'm going my God and so we thank you and we bless your name God you know the beginning and you know the ending and the writer declares so teach us to number our days we don't know Lord when our role will call up but help us Lord to be prepared help us to be ready we don't know what will take us out so I pray tonight Lord your blessings will be upon us remember those that will be going home different places we pray oh God that your journey mercy will be with them Take over now, we pray, as we commit everything into your hand, in the name of Jesus. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Father Jesus Christ rest remain and abide with us, both now and forever. Amen. The family of the late Beatrice Anglin acknowledges sincere gratitude for the pouring of love, sympathy expressed in your prayers, comforting message, the visit, the phone calls, on all other expression of kindness and concern. We have discovered the value of true friendship and loyalty shown all in this time of bereavement. May God richest blessing 
be with you all and continue forevermore. God bless you. God bless you. Please don't read them. I'm not putting it on the retail. I'm not going to put it on the retail. I'm not going
The train. Yesterday, the pouring rain. With her clothes all packed, her face messed up. I could tell she was feeling pain. I thought I had something yeah, sweet to tell her. As I opened up my umbrella, she was so confused, scared and abused. Try to hide it with a smile. I don't know why I come back. I use my charm just to come.
Killer vibes in the song. That's what the respect comes down, you see? Just trying to ease the frustration. And she told me her story. I told her, baby, don't worry. I'm the man that you're looking for. Baby, cause your love is sad. Because I'm taking you home with me tonight. Hope you'll see the girl. This is my best start. But don't be finishing. With me. But bring up the girl, I'm trying to get you to garbage or something around. With me, that's a night. Cause I'm a love, love. Midnight, I'm in for tell you. You think it's easy for Bob to open out the shop world here? I'm nothing wrong. You think it's easy for Bob to open out the sun world here? I'm blown and found. It's no easy. When the sun goes down, I will show you what I'm really made of. You think it is? I don't know why it comes down in the dark. I'm for you. But I won't feel it more We are here from a little land of I won't feel it more Sometimes it feel like we let go. I won't feel it more We are feeling from a little land of I won't feel it more Just say you know love her and together, but reason with her and make sure you know this. I'll clap your hands and stand with me. This has to be a trick wild trick. So they have to take time out of the ladies and go on, go on. 